Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell beginner project idea video. So in this video, I'm going to be going over uh, tons of beginner project ideas that I have thought of. I thought of only doing five at first, but I actually came up with eight um, pretty useful uh, beginner project ideas that you can do in PowerShell. So I'm going to be going over the eight different ideas today. Um, and I also have this list posted on my GitHub here. So I'll be posting the link to this GitHub in the description in the video. So if you guys ever want access to this list, uh, you won't have to rewatch the video. You can simply just go in the GitHub and that list will be there. And what I plan on doing over the next few weeks is creating a video for each project in the way that I would solve it. I might add a little bit of functionalities in those videos um, compared to what I'm asking or what I'm suggesting to do as a beginner project idea. Um, but just to show you guys like how I would go about solving these. Um, and these are just really good ideas that I think a lot of people could benefit from making and maybe even bring into their own environment if you're currently working um, somewhere in tech and you guys don't have something that does this. It could be something that you guys, you can bring to your boss or your manager and say, hey, I've been able to automate this. Can we put this in production and do the tests that you would have to do? in order to put it in production, of course. Uh, but I think that some of these could be very useful for you guys. So the first one that I have here is an environment checker or like a heartbeat checker. Uh, so there are a lot of software out there that does do this, but you can actually do this very, very simply with PowerShell. So what we're gonna be doing in this one is we're just gonna be doing pings to the different computers, the different servers and the different websites that we're hosting. Um, just to see if any of those are down. And if any of them are down, send an email saying that they're down, maybe create like a nice little report and log the results of seeing if it's up or down. And you can run these with like a automated uh, task, like a scheduled task. Uh, so it'll be automated to run like every five to 10 minutes or so. And it checks all of it, logs all the results in a log file, sends emails if there's any outages. And then this way you can have a good log of your system's statuses over the last couple weeks, last couple months, or a couple days, um, be able to see what server or what website constantly goes down, maybe investigate why that happens, or find out that all your systems are always up all the time. And that's great, because at least that is gonna give you some type of metric to count against. The next one that I have here, kind of like in the same field as the environment checker, is gonna be a service checker. So here we're gonna have like a list. Now you can have that list in a file or an array in the script that will have like a list of services that you want running or stopped or both. Um, so you can have like a list of the services that you want running, a list of services that you don't want running on your server because there are some services you might not running like the print spooler which does have vulnerabilities and you don't necessarily want it running unless it's on a print server. Um, so you can always make sure that that spooler is always stopped, except on the specific servers you want it running, and then make sure it's always running on your print server. Uh, so that's like an example of one. Uh, and then you basically run it and check against the computers and check the services. And if it's different than what you want it to be, make the script change it, and then maybe log that action that was taken. So you would have a history of Okay, so the service stopped on this day at this time, my script restarted it. I just kind of see again, you'll be able to see what service is constantly stopping and maybe be able to determine why it's stopping. Is it like the Windows updates that's causing it to, to go down? So these are all things that are very, very beginner. We'll, we'll actually expand what you might be able to do in your environment afterwards as well. Um, the other thing that I have here since the first two involve making a bunch of log files. What I found a lot in my environment was we have a lot of log files that now take up a lot of space. And sometimes you're gonna be running out of that space because of those log files. So what I would also write as a third idea is a log file cleanup script. So basically it automates the cleanup of these log files older than a certain date. So in the script, you would have a uh, age of file. So you could put like 30 days, 60 days, uh, just put like an arbitrary number of days that you want to keep those files for. And then you would have a script that runs again 
via a scheduled task, um, or you can have it running all the time in like a, a for loop. Um, but I would probably recommend just running it as a scheduled task. It goes, it looks at those locations of those log files. Again, you can assign that in the script or by file, like a CSV file. And then in the CSV file, you can have like log location and the number of days that you want to keep those logs for and have different days set for different log locations. Like the options are kind of endless for this one. And then it would clean up those files and that would prevent your servers from filling up with log files. And you can do this not only for the logs that you yourself create, but also like the logs in INET pub generated by IAS or other uh, applications or services that you're running. Another one that could be very useful is a very simple backup system. So because this is a beginner script idea, um, this simple backup system is not going to be doing incrementals or anything like that. I do have a plan to make a video for those, but as a beginner uh, project idea, just do a simple backup system. Give it like one or more folders to backup, any backup location, and then a scheduled task again. Uh, or maybe create like a scheduled task um, that gets... Um, that gets launched when a certain peripheral is plugged in. Like when you plug in an external hard drive, it will automatically start that job and back up all the folders to that backup location. Now, again, with that, um, I didn't write it down on the list here, but you could also create a log of that and log what files are actually backed up if there's any errors in the backup. And what you would want to do is in that backup location, every time you run the backup, it would create a new folder with the day's date of the backup, maybe even the time if you're doing multiple backups a day, and then back up all those files to that folder. Uh, and then maybe compress it so you're saving some space. Um, so this way it's not just a one to one ratio. Now, a lot of these other ones, I think all of them are related to Active Directory. So this will really depend on if you have an Active Directory environment. Um, but I also have videos on how to create your own Active Directory environment. This is good practice. If you haven't had a job yet in tech, uh, it's definitely a good skill to have is Active Directory knowledge. Um, so one of the first ones that I have here is a one-off account creator. So on this channel, we've made um, automation of Active Directory, which is usually based on either like a student system if you're in education or an HR system to create your employees. But this would be like a one-off account creator. So you have a volunteer coming to work for you for a couple days, or you have um, an outside uh, third party contractor coming to do some work for you, and you just need to create an account for them they're not gonna be in your HR system. So what you could do is you can create a script. So at least this way, all the times that you create these one-off accounts, they're always the same. And what you could do is you can have that script take in simply their name, and then maybe some other properties, um, like I've put in description, office, or title. This way you can give, maybe a description would be good. This way you can tell what the account was for. And then that script would generate a username and password for the user and then display that on your screen so you can give it to them and they can log in. And maybe some things to take this a little bit further, um, like something that I might do on the video when I create this, is maybe create um, another prompt that will ask you how many days you want this account to be active for and automatically expire that account. This way you're not leaving doors open in your environment. Um, so it's always good to always kind of keep that security idea in the back of your head. Um, so for number six, we have account membership cloner. So again, we've kind of made a little bit more advanced version of this already on the channel. We've made um, automating group memberships. Uh, but again, if you have a one-off user and they just want to, let's say you get asked to create a account for a volunteer and that volunteer should have the same permissions as um, John Smith in X department. So you would create the user and then you can use this account membership cloner, give it the name, um, give it the two names. So you would have your volunteer user and then your John Smith or your John Doe um, that they want the permissions copied from. And it will clone all the permissions from John Doe or J John Smith 
and copy them to the volunteer user. Uh, so this way you do, you're not stuck going in, seeing what groups they're a part of, and then manually adding all those groups to that user. That script will do it all for you. Now, another one is account lockout checker. So this will check Active Directory for all locked out accounts. Now you can either um, make it unlock the accounts automatically. I don't know if I would actually recommend doing that, um, depending on what type of environment you're in. Uh, it might not be good because you could be getting attacked by a password spray attack, but maybe check for the locked out accounts and then send an email report uh, to the administrators with the list of locked out accounts, and then they can take a look at them. It just gives you a little bit more visibility before someone goes and says, hey, I can't log in. I can't log into my account. What's going on? You would already know it's been locked out. You can investigate it. Um, and then some later projects, uh, we can actually deep dive, deep dive deeper into this and maybe get the reasons for you guys. Uh, but these are just very beginner projects these really shouldn't take longer than about an hour or two, probably, um, depending on how in-depth you go into them. And then the last one we have here is account password expiry alert. So here we're going to be checking Active Directory again for all accounts. And we're going to be checking to see if their password expires in 14 days. Now, 14 days is just an arbitrary number that I picked. Uh, you can check it for 30 days, 14 days. Again, five days, four, three, two, one, and send an email to that user every time that you have that specific amount of days left, sending them an email saying, hey, your password's going to expire in X amount of days. Please be sure to change it. Uh, and then this way they can at least change it before it expires because sometimes, um, yes, Windows allows you to do a login and then change the password once it's expired. But there are some certain situations, like if you're a um, company that does a lot of VPN logins, that does not necessarily let you change the password once it's expired. They will just get an error saying that their password's incorrect. Uh, they won't be able to log in after that. So these are a bunch of the beginner project ideas. Um, I'm going to have this, like I said, on my GitHub already. And that GitHub link is going to be down below. And I'm actually going to be when we're making these projects on the YouTube videos, I'm going to be posting the source code in the GitHub as well. I will only be posting the code to the GitHub once the video is posted, um, but, but be sure to watch the video. This way you can see the way that I solve it um, and understand the code that is going to be in the GitHub. Um, but I will be doing each one of these in their own video, and that's going to be starting very, very soon. Um, so if you guys do want to go ahead and try some of these right away, definitely go for it. I would definitely recommend it and then come back and see what I've done for the solution. Or if you try it and just can't quite figure out how to get something done, um, you know that I will be posting how I would get it done. Um, so you guys can always come back and check that later. If you guys have any suggestions or any other beginner project ideas that you would recommend to people to do. And then if I like that idea, or if I think that that idea is super useful for a lot of other people, I will do a video on your beginner project ideas and I will mention your name in that video. So be sure to put down your questions. And if you have any beginner project ideas down below, hit that subscribe, that like button, hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.